So you want to give your art as a gift, maybe to several people. I mean, just sitting down and doing a bunch of paintings, <laughs> depending on how much time you have. How about a Christmas craft that would allow you to do several gifts of your art at once and fairly quickly. That's what we're going to try to do today in this Christmas craft and painting session. So fair warning, holiday fun ahead. You've already got my gift? Really? How come I don't believe you? All right, hello there, all you minders. Hope uh, you're gearing up for a great holiday season. This is the Mind of Watercolor, and my name is Steve Mitchell, and we're going to work on some painting that you can gift, maybe to a lot of people, without having to do lots of big paintings. <laughs> Well, last year we covered the uh, holiday Christmas card idea where, and you can see these little clear corners. You do your painting and you apply these corners and then if they want to, they can lift this out and frame it. So it's a great way to make a Christmas card, maybe for a particular special person who's been wanting your watercolors. Oh, and by the way, I will link to this at the end of the video. You'll see a link to it. I'll also try to put it down in the description. This video was a year ago, so check it out if you want to try those. I see uh, tons and tons of watercolor Christmas card videos out there, and there's some really good videos that you can go check out. Uh, lots of great ideas for creating cards and watercolor, um, but I want to do something different. What about an ornament that is also like a framed artwork? Well, I found these, and you can find there's all different kind of frames out there that double as an ornament. This actually came in a pack of five. It was really cheap. And offhand, I don't remember how much. If I can find an Amazon link, uh, I will put it below. I actually got these on Hobby Lobby. And it's just a, a chipboard ornament with a little tie at the top, piece of twine. And then on the back, uh, you can take the back out and put your watercolor in it, which is super cool. You know, there's it's, there's no glass. It's like a little piece of mylar or cellophane. And again, these were not expensive. What I want to do, what I want to try to do in this video, is show you how to uh, make several of these quickly. And of course, of course, we're going to use a favorite technique of mine, and that is spontaneous painting. Fantastic! Spontaneous painting. Now, uh, what I have here is an arch block. This is an arch 9 by 12 block. And I want to take and do this edge to edge. I'm not going to put any tape. Spontaneous paintings I'll usually tape off an edge. But I'll also try to go for a composition usually. I won't do that uh, here in this one. I'm going to try to create a pattern. An overall pattern. And you can probably already see where I'm going with this. And I think what I'm going to do is a somewhat wintry color mix. Maybe some blues, blue greens, that sort of thing. Make it very limited. So let's see what we can do. And I am just going to pre wet this entire block. And if you're using Arsh, it's going to soak it up pretty quick like a sponge. So you, you probably need a good sort of a priming coat. Let that soak in and then come back with more. You can always just look at your paper and you want a, an overall semi-gloss sheen with no dead flat spots. That just indicates that it's dry. I'll get out my Princeton Neptune Oval Wash. I'll start out with some ultramarine blue. And I don't want it terribly unnaturally vi vibrant. So I'm going to add some neutral tint. I'm going to get a lot of juicy inky paint out here. As I add these washes, I'm actually adding more water. So while I want that damp, I don't want it like super, super sopping wet. And now we're just going to create a pattern throughout. It's spontaneous, so I can't really tell you how you want to do this. 
Uh, what I'm going to do, though, just for consistency and get this pattern going throughout, is these sober, sort of overlapping rolling hill shapes. And I can tell very, very quickly here I did not mix up enough. Oh, and that's quite a bit darker there, which is fine. Can have some areas maybe darker. I want to leave some of these white areas. That might actually uh, turn out to be some good snow. I don't know. We'll see. When I'm doing spontaneous painting, I'm trying not to be too planned, if you know what I mean. Where I'm expecting too much of a certain thing. I like to let it go and see what happens. But I'm going to take some of these shapes right off the edge. Just the one as much area and pattern as I can find or create. Let's get some of this darker pigment. Let's just start popping in some spots. Pretty cool. See how much they're spreading. If I mix up more paint, I want to make sure I don't add a lot more water. I'm going to start blue greening the mixture now, adding some phthalo green. Now, just random places we're going to. Get a little vertical stroke or two going. And think of these uh, like hilly things as land masses, I guess, that you just are attaching these tree shapes to. I'm going to make clusters. You are seeing this, honestly, as it's developed. I've not even practiced this, so it's just <laughs> typical spontaneous painting. And try not to stack these, you know, try to, if you do the pattern down, try to stagger them. I don't know for sure, but I think that's actually going to be a better approach to stagger them. Make some tiny ones, maybe? Short ones, in other words. It's okay if you kind of fill in, you know, but make sure you leave some of these really wonderful soft white spots. It's already dry up here. I'm getting a hard edge. And it's it's a good idea maybe to cross some of these horizontal rolling shapes. At least I think it will be. Um, uh, take some of the stalo green mixture, uh, add a little more neutral tint to it, and get just some really dark. And at the base of some of these tree shapes, just tap in some dark spots just to give it a sort of a shadowy base. All right, and I am gonna just completely and thoroughly stamp out and wash out my brush. And I am going to squeeze real, real hard so that it's nearly dry. Now it's gonna be a good pickup tool. Actually, you know what? Cause I'm gonna, ha I'd have to keep blotting it. Let's use a paper towel. I'm just gonna fold it over the corner. I'm gonna try one other thing. I know what I want to see there, but I'm not seeing it. Actually, this is an angled shader, but it's essentially flat. We get a little water in there. It's damp, but it's not soaking wet. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking. So I've got uh, some water in there, and I'm just brushing down. Ooh, look at that. And it breaks that, that plane. You know, there's more than one way to skin a cat. No, I would never skin a cat. But you know the expression. Look at that. Isn't that cool? That works. That works. Oh, yeah. Some of this. Don't make picket fences with this technique. Or it will look unnatural. Make the bases and the tops irregular both in spacing this way and this way. And i got to get some of this everywhere before it dries. That's looking awesome. If I do say so my own self. That was good. I'm patting myself on the back a little bit. Yep, I'm sorry I am. 
And and a, a regular flat would work too. You don't need an angled shader. Cool, cool, cool. And occasionally I'm just washing it out and drying it some. A little bit of moisture in the brush is actually helping. Wipe it off occasionally. It's got to uh, keep keep that edge though. I don't like them getting too fat. Nice little overall pattern is what we're looking for. Sweet. And I think we are just about to that let it dry stage. Love it, love it, love it. All right. And then we're going to let this dry. Completely dry. All right. We are completely dry. And you'll notice I have a little, this is my little test corner <laughs> down here. But what we're going to do now, uh, you can see by my test, we're going to do just a few little detail additions to the tops of these soft trees. Very, very simple. Uh, I've just got this uh, number four silver brush black velvet. And uh, I have plenty of paint here left from when I mixed it up before, which is by design. So I've got a lot of palette residue. It had dried on my palette, which is actually a good thing because then I don't uh, get my brush wet. And you want a fairly small brush. You could actually go smaller than this. And we're going to do the tops of these trees here. And so all I do is I just come down almost like a dotted line and go into that soft spot. Then just go back up here and I'm going to dry my brush a little bit. Swish, 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 almost in a Z. A few little dots. Do that again. Swish. I want my brush dryer because I want a little bit of dry brush action here. Right into that tree top. Okay. Just as simple as that. Now you can do whatever you want. I'm just showing you what I have done and what is making the technique that I've done. If you want to, in some of the lighter spots here, you can add a bit of a tree trunk just like that. That's dark, so let's get a little bit darker paint. This, this is what I'm doing. I'm just going a little, almost a dot dash, and then I'm just I'm gonna dry my, get my brush, swish back and forth like that. That's all I'm doing. Practice it on dry paper or on a scrap paper if you want to. Just gonna go through. I want to do that with all of these. Go down as far as you want. I mean, you know, it's your piece. You do what you want. You can add a few straight ones with with very sparse, almost no side bows or no side bows at all. Looks kind of good, actually, just uh, to have a few barer ones. That is the technique. I'm not going to take you through every tree. I just want to show you what I'm doing. You know, and as you get to going, you can build up some steam. Simple, but effective. Now, and you can already see this other technique that I have going. So, I, I first I tried a silver marker. I didn't like that. I think what works best is this Jelly Roll. I, I used the Jelly Roll 10, which is the bold. What I'm doing is next to some of these these things that we did in the wet and wet, you know, where I picked up the paint. I'm just actually going beside those or in those. And again, I'm using this little dot dash streak. So they're little tree trunks, essentially, that are, are, are lighter, that are standing up. Space them irregularly this way and this way, you know, on the bottoms and the tops. That's the technique. That's what you'll end up if you're with if you're following exactly what I have done. All right, so what I tried here were some sort of long flowing lines. Uh, that's fine. What I liked instead was just a very simple, again, I'm using the same number four round. It's just down under these tree groupings is just to just to add a little bit of a crisper sort of base like that. Very simple. Just just something to sort of indicate 
the ground area. Just little pieces of it. You don't have to do a lot of that either. Don't have to do any of it really if you don't want to. Maybe you just like it soft everywhere like this. And I may leave some areas like that and see how it looks through the frame of the ornament, but I like to I like to tap in a few dots. Just basically decide to bring some focus to the softness, but just in a few spots, because that softness is actually kind of cool. Subtle, subtle, subtle. Keep it subtle is my recommendation. All right, I'm going to I'm just going to go through and finish this whole thing. All right, so when those techniques are done, this is the way mine looks. But what I want to do now is one final thing, and I'm going to probably call it done. Just going to get a larger uh, round. This is a number 10. I'm uh, going to get some dark watercolor here, some of the same colors. Maybe I'm going to add a little more blue to it, some neutral tint. Just Sort of a bluish side of the same color. You want something with it that will hold a bit of water because I'm going to spatter. And we're just going to do a little bit of this. And uh, a lot of times this technique that I use is tapping it on another brush. You turn your, your brush in the direction that you want spatter to spray. So if I go like this, which I'm not going to do, I could, uh, you're going to get spatters that go that direction. I'm just kind of following the curve of the ground. I am pretty happy with that. So let me show you how I prepared the ornaments. All right, well, when it comes to the frame itself, I think I'm just going to paint it white. I've got these three things here to try on each of the three frames. This is just a silver metallic acrylic. Uh, this is a pearl white, and this is a polar ice sugar metallic. First thing I think, though, is I want to paint this with gesso. You could probably use just white acrylic paint, but I want to back those with a nice opaque white. It may take a couple coats. Remove the back. I untie this. I don't want to get paint on it. And I just have some cheap acrylic gesso. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this with all three frames, and we'll come back when I'm done. All right, I have these all three coated with gesso. Uh, once again, you could use uh, white acrylic if you want to. This is not perfect coverage. This is two coats. Uh, it, I think to get totally white, I'd probably take three or four coats. I don't think I need that. I just need uh, you know, to be able to back up these paints. I'm going to try one each on each of these, and we're going to see how it goes. Let us try first the silver. Metallic silver, nothing special. I suspect I'm going to like one of these better. This is the Polar Ice Sugar Metallic. It's got these, I don't know if you can see it, it's got these like grains in it. Very kind of sandy and granular. And I think this is probably going to be the ticket right here. A little hard to, to see in this light on video, but it's got a metallic sheen, kind of a, more of a pearlescent kind of a sheen. And I'm just curious how it looks on top of this silver. Looks good. I'm going to do it. I mean, there, there's all kinds of things you could do. You could uh, douse these things in glitter if you want to. Let us see how this pearl white does. Let me end up putting that sugar metallic on all three. This is a lot of fun. I, I don't craft very often. So, you know, coming up with these things and trying different things is a blast. Yeah, that's going to look good. I think going forward, if I do any more of these ornaments, it's just going to be white. A white gesso undercoating going straight to the sugar metallic. All right, let's frame us some miniature paintings. First step is just uh, take your sheet. If it's on a block, you want to take it off. If you already have a loose sheet, then you're good to go. Now, the way I found to do this... Uh, you can come up with your own way, but basically you want it to be able to fit within this outer ring here and you know so that it catches on that lip, which is about which is the size of the mylar or whatever this is that they put in there. Uh, I did a couple things. First of all, blacken one of these on the edge 
Uh, if you notice then when I place it, I can see the edge better. And I could choose this way if I wanted. Choose my composition where I'm going to cut these out. Another way is uh, these don't sit perfectly flush. Is just to get put it in, turn this over. Edge of the ornament catches it a little bit and uh, we'll move it around. You get a little bit better sense of the cropping if you actually have the ornament on there. I like this one right here, maybe like that. So I'm just going to carefully lift the ornament up. What I'm doing next is I'm just taking a white charcoal pencil. You could use a colored pencil, but just in case I want to erase this, and this shows better than a graphite pencil, I just hold this down and trace. And if I were you, I would wait till you get all of them chosen before you start cutting them out. And that's all I need is a faint outline. So uh, let's move on to another one. You don't want these. You don't want these things if your ornament has these catching it. You want this edge to be able to move that that plastic around, but you don't. You want to be able to lift the ornament and have it leave the plastic. There's another good one right there. Let's keep searching, just out of curiosity. That's also a good one. That's a good one. I think I'm going to come back to this one. Let's do down. Let's look for another one. See, that's a good one right there. But I'm going to go with those three. And the next step is to cut it out. Hey, cut it out. And if you cut right on that line or, or just inside that line, it should. We'll test that theory in a minute. It should fit right in that frame. All right. Now, before we put these together, let me just talk about this. You may not want to use this at all. I'm tempted not to use it. I will probably go ahead and use it for the sake of this video. But uh, you could seal this uh, with an acrylic spray sealer or a fixative. Uh, Dorland's wax. These are two things I have just to give you an idea. This UV archival uh, gloss varnish is fine for watercolor. You just want to kind of spray it high and let it settle on there. Don't get, your, don't get it real wet with spray. Another really fine option is Dorland's wax. That would seal it off fine, and then you wouldn't even need to use this. But as you saw, these make for a handy template. I'm just gonna go ahead and put these together now for the video. If you do use this, uh, just take a nice lint-free cloth, rub it down, get the fingerprints off. Let's do that. Let's see how we are. Make sure the watercolor fits. It does fit, and it's a good idea to have it a tiny bit loose because uh, the paper in there, depending on the humidity level, will expand or contract. So uh, make sure your your hanging eyelid is at the top, and you know just rotate it with your fingers till you get it where you want. Then put in the backing piece. Then you just rotate these little doohickeys. Let's see how it looks. That's good. That's lined up, and I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to do all three, and then we'll finish it off with some embellishments. And I like them. I think they look pretty good. Okay, so there's any number of things that you could do to these. You could leave them as is. Uh, you could tie a nice bow. I actually have these uh, little stick-on bows. Yeah, the red looks pretty good. I am going to put it on with a little hot glue. Make your own bows. Do whatever. Then I've got these little snowflakes. I thought maybe I'd add a couple. I need a, a little riser for that one. For some reason I want to put these off to the side. Let's use these white ones. It's a little more understated. Not bad. These are both white sparkly ones. Just wanted to see how that worked. That's sort of an understated way. And there is a slightly different look. All right, and finally, I did not really like these twines that came with it. Uh, I've been fine if I was doing kind of a rustic theme. Uh, I went and got this. 
which is just a cord. You could use a ribbon also. There is our ornament. We'll trim these back to about here. Make them any length that you want. I'm making mine about maybe three inches. You know, the loop part. All right. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm sure you can see there are so many variations that you could do on this, but I like how quickly these made up. Just a really easy way to gift somebody your art. Thanks, everyone. I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much, patrons, for your support of this channel. I hope everyone has a very Merry Christmas. Don't know how many videos I'm going to be doing yet during December. There will be more, but uh, not sure yet. Holidays and all, time off, time with family, you know. But hope everyone out there enjoys their holidays and the holiday spirit. See everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.